Hello, my name is Tyler Specht, and I own a company in Orlando called Squid Crate Productions with my buddy Kyler, who's behind the camera right now. But literally none of that matters at all, because that's not what we're here for today. Today, we're gonna dive through a series that him and I have been wanting to start to kind of buffer ourselves up and also try to educate a little bit in what we actually like to do. So we're gonna do a crawl through literally every single effect in Adobe Premiere Pro. We don't know what a lot of them do. A lot of them, we do know what they do, but we're gonna change that by going through all this. So we're gonna start with Convulsion Kernel today. So strap in. So Convulsion Kernel is one of those things when you drag it onto a clip, you go, I was gonna say, but I don't wanna say, I don't wanna curse that yet. Convulsion kernel is one of those things that you grab it, you drag it onto your clip, and you immediately go, what the f It is just, it's a nine different little number boxes that you can change, and they're all sporadic numbers depending on which preset you've thrown on there, or if you just threw on convulsion kernel itself. This is kind of what sparked us wanting to do this series. I had no idea what I was doing. I think I'm pretty all right at Premiere. I think my videos look all right, and I always room for improvement but it's, I just wanna get better. I wanna know literally everything about it because this is what I wanna do. I dove into a little bit of what Convulsion Kernel is. It's not simple. It kinda of took me a little while to wrap my head around it, but once I got it, I think I have a pretty fundamental idea of what's actually going on behind the scenes. You can imagine it as like a three by three by three, or just a three by three for, you know, normal people, grid of numbers. So it's numbered M11, M12, M13, M22, 21, 22, 23, and so on like that, and it goes up to 33. So what each one of these does for a generalized explanation is it's going into depth on a pixel and it's brightening it or darkening it and then multiplying that number across all the pixels. So if you take one of the sliders and slide it all the way up, you're just gonna have a, a whitewashed, very bright image. So if you need just a white screen, just do that. Or just, you know, turn the brightness up. What it can do is actually kind of really cool. It's basically what all the blur and sharpen effects are built off of. You have multiple options when you're dragging convulsion kernel onto your timeline. There is just the basic convulsion kernel and that is just a blank slate of convulsion kernel. It gives you the blank matrix and then you fill your own numbers in, you choose your own scale, you choose your own offset. You also have options of the presets that are also built into Premiere Pro. So you have the Gaussian blur built in, you have the find edges built in it already. So one of the really cool ones that I literally didn't know was there at all was that find edges one. And what that does is it basically changes everything to white and blue and it really defines your edges in a like a very bright white. So if you need to see if something's straight and you can't really see the edge too well, if you throw that on there, you can straighten your image with that white curve and then take it off. Some of the other convulsion kernel presets include a blur, a find edges, an emboss, a blur more, a sharpen, a sharpen more, and so on with those. Which is really just giving you that nitpicky, very defined effects that you want. So you can use the regular Gaussian blur, or you can use a convulsion kernel Gaussian blur, which is another preset that's set in there. But it's really not a huge difference. This is more for specific exact looks if you want something to be exactly how you're picturing it. The Gaussian blur and the convulsion kernel blur are almost the exact same effect by default. You just have to change the Gaussian blur, the normal Gaussian blur to around 2.5 to three, and then it's the same thing. For every day, I would highly recommend just go straight into the blurs, go straight into the sharpens so you don't have to waste your time looking up these matrixes. If you are hard set on using these convulsion kernels though, we'll put a link down in the description of different presets to get you started off that are pretty much already embedded in Adobe Premiere. Just in case you're using it for a different program, we'll throw a link down below. Other than that though, overall I recommend just sticking with those basic blurs and sharpens. There's really no point to dive into it. So I think the first part of our journey to become Adobe Premiere Pro Masters and just Adobe Creative Cloud Masters in general was an all right success. We're gonna always improve. So if you like what we're trying to do or have any comments or tips, please leave a comment below. I'm gonna do the really cliche. No, I don't wanna say, I don't wanna be self-aware like that because then that's even more of a douchebag thing to do. I know I'm self-aware, but I'm gonna ask you to do it anyway. No, and I want you to do it. I just want it. I want it, I'm greedy. I'm a little greedy bastard. Bye.